Will the metaverse change how we work, play, and socialize? Is this the first version or V1 of Ready Player One, or even worse, The Matrix? Oh, hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, we are going to look at the metaverse. Or maybe I should say metaverses, because you know, you can have more than just one. What is it? Why would you use it? Is it even something that you asked for? How do you access it right now? These are just a few of the questions that we'll try to answer in this video. First off, what is this thing called the metaverse? And the easiest way to make this real is to just share an example of technology that you use today and to look at how things might change. Now, so many of us are familiar with joining a Zoom or a Microsoft Teams meeting. You see your classmates or all of your coworkers in these little boxes with their video feed. Now, imagine instead of that, you're now in a 3D environment where you can interact with all of them. Or imagine that you're in an astronomy class and you're learning about planets and stars. You can now fully immerse yourself in the content. And that's pretty cool. It makes me think about what I could do with my YouTube channel to teach and show some of these different apps. Or imagine that you want to attend a concert in 3D, like, I don't know, maybe a Justin Bieber concert, which recently happened. And I seem to know a lot about it. Uh, and I might have attended this concert. Uh, just, just cut right there. Uh, I, I shouldn't have shared that. All of these are examples of how experiences become a lot more just immersive and rich in the metaverse. You might be wondering, where does this word metaverse even come from? Well, it's the combination of two separate words. First, you have meta, which in Greek stands for next or beyond. And then you have the word universe. So basically the next or beyond universe. Pretty clever, huh? The term metaverse first appeared in the 1992 novel Snow Crash by author Neil Stevenson. In this book, humans connected to the metaverse using high quality goggles or just a basic terminal. And that reminds me, I should probably talk to Neil about my stock picks. He seems to have a really good sense for the future. The term stuck, and now when people refer to a highly immersive 3D space, people say metaverse. We'll have to see if this term sticks around for the long haul. I mean, who actually says cyberspace anymore? From my time working at Microsoft, anytime you develop a product, you want it to be at least 10 times better than existing solutions. At least if you want it to be a runaway success. Otherwise, you're just building a better mousetrap. The problem that the metaverse aims to solve is when you meet and collaborate with others on the internet, it just doesn't feel that personal. That is, after all, why people fly halfway around the world for a one-hour business meeting. And if you look at the last two years, despite having all of this technology that claims to connect us, we all still feel so isolated and alone. Or at least I do down here in my YouTube basement studio. Hello? The reason so many of us prefer meeting in person is you can see all of the facial expressions, you can read the body language, you can hear the tone of the voice. The metaverse aims to replicate as much of this as possible so when you meet in a digital environment, you get a similar experience. You might be thinking, we already have experiences like this. I mean, I spent half my life playing Second Life. You've even had people get married in the game Second Life. And despite what you might be thinking, that was not me. You have games like Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, and all of these have highly immersive 3D worlds. And in a sense, you could describe all of these as the metaverse. But the metaverse aims to make them even richer and more immersive. Today, when you play these games, you're typically sitting in front of your computer screen or maybe on your phone. With the metaverse, you'll wear VR or AR goggles. 
Maybe you have haptic gloves so you can interact using your hands with objects in this 3D space. The metaverse aims to make everything feel just more lifelike and just more real. So how do you even access the metaverse? Well, today you already have some metaverse experiences. Facebook, as an example, has a line of products called Horizon that allow you to meet together with others in a highly immersive 3D worlds. Microsoft has Mesh for Microsoft Teams. They also have Spaces for SharePoint. And you also have all the different games that we mentioned up above. In a sense, all of these are already the metaverse. But over time, these experiences will become even richer and even more immersive, and you'll likely start to access more of them with VR goggles. So what are the benefits of the metaverse? Well, first off, companies like Meta, previously known as Facebook, Microsoft, Epic Games will likely make billions of dollars off of all of this. No, oh, Kevin, Kevin, the consumer benefit. Oh, the consumer benefits. Okay. For consumers, you'll have a more lifelike and rich meeting experience. And hopefully this cuts down on things like your commute. Maybe it'll cut down on the business traveling that you have to do, and that should be a net positive for the planet. And also this should generate millions and millions of jobs. I mean, after all, you need someone to build these 3D worlds, these 3D buildings. You'll probably even have people offering services within these 3D worlds. I mean, after all, who's going to style my hair in the metaverse? I need it to look good. Before we see any broad adoption of the metaverse, there are some serious challenges that need to be worked through. And I think Elon Musk says it best. I don't see someone strapping a friggin' t you know, screen to their face all day uh, and not wanting to, to ever leave. I, there seems no way. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I don't think I could wear this for more than an hour at a time. And adding to that, if I want the best possible graphics, I have to hardwire onto my computer. And goodbye to any free movement. And also battery life is a serious concern. Snap just released their latest version of their spectacles. They're pretty comfortable to wear, but you can only use them continuously for about 30 minutes. Aside from all of the hardware concerns, you also have issues related to privacy. Meta or Facebook is one of the leading companies pushing for the metaverse, and they're not exactly a model citizen for limiting how much data they track about you. And imagine what advertising is going to look like in the metaverse. It'll probably be even more aggressive. Not to mention the potential for trolling in the metaverse. Imagine all the bullying and the harassment that happens just online, and now put that into a 3D environment. Lastly, you also have cost concerns to get these fancy goggles, these different sensors and haptics. That's going to cost a lot of money and probably only a few people will be able to afford that, at least initially. Many companies are already investing substantially in making the metaverse a reality. And probably one of the best examples of this is the company Meta, or previously known as Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg is literally betting the entire company on the metaverse. He's already investing billions of dollars and billions more will follow. At the 2021 Connect event, Mark officially renamed the company from Facebook to Meta. And this way it better aligns with their new charter. Of course, nothing to do with all of the negativity associated with the name Facebook. He's even gone so far as to rename all employees MetaMates. Yes, I'm serious. I'm not making that up. It's kind of like how the Navy refers to all of their sailors as shipmates, but here, all employees are now MetaMates. You can't make this stuff up. Facebook already has an entire product line called Horizon dedicated to the metaverse. They also have hardware to go along with it. You can use the Oculus Quest 2 goggles. They also have Project Cambria, which is the next generation set of goggles, which include even more sensors. Facebook also has tremendous assets in its existing products. You have Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp. It's easy to imagine that VR meetings will come to Messenger at some point. I think there are three main reasons why Meta is investing so heavily into the metaverse. 
First off, Mark Zuckerberg truly believes that this is going to be the next paradigm of computing. You started with desktop computers, then it shifted to the web, and then you had mobile computing. He believes this is going to be that next step. And by investing so heavily, Meta will have the first mover advantage. The second reason, this gives Meta the potential to own the platform. Today, when you use Instagram or Facebook or WhatsApp, you're using these apps on other people's platforms, like iOS or Android. And Meta has had some issues with this. Apple recently restricted how much data could be shared back with Meta. Turns out people don't want that much tracked about them, and this has materially affected Meta's revenue. And now Alphabet with Android is doing the exact same thing, where they want to give users control over their data. And third, Meta has recently had trouble at both attracting and retaining younger users. It turns out your business is not very sustainable if your users just keep getting older and older. I guess young users just don't like sharing their lives with Uncle Bob on Facebook. By investing so heavily in the metaverse, this gives Meta a fresh opportunity at pulling in some younger users. Microsoft, my former employer, is also investing aggressively into the metaverse. Microsoft recently acquired Activision Blizzard, which owns popular franchises like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and Diablo. You could describe many of these as metaverses already. They've also been experimenting with Mesh for Microsoft Teams and Spaces for SharePoint. They also have hardware with the HoloLens. Microsoft has a massive community of business customers, and usually when you see new technology like this emerge, usually it first grows up on the business side before making its way to consumers. You also have other companies like Zoom, Alphabet, Amazon, and they have tremendous assets but they haven't yet made any announcements related to the metaverse. And this is likely more reflective of the fact that it's just still so early in its development. All in all, the metaverse will likely eventually come, but I personally think we're still decades out from realizing the full dream and vision. There's still so much advancement that needs to happen. Just look at where the hardware is today. It's kind of like talking about the internet in the 1970s. There were lots of ideas of what it could become, but I don't think anyone truly saw the full potential. All right, well, that's a quick look at the metaverse. Let me know down below in the comments, what do you think about the metaverse? Do you think it'll have a positive impact or do you think it's all just hype? To watch more videos like this, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.